Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure for me to have the opportunity to be able, sorry, uh, to give me this presentation and to participate with other colleagues for the other specialty in this statement. Um, it's very complicated to, to have an agreement between medical oncology, radiation oncology, and surgeons, but I try to find or I try to give some information in, uh, from medical oncologists. Squamous cell carcinoma and hypopharyn carcinoma is a major problem in head and neck cancer. In general, the majority of the patients have an advanced stage at presentation, and there is no difference in the risk or neck dis dissemination by a T stage. Decision making in the management of this patient is uh, doing between different specialists, head and neck surgeon, medical oncologists, and radiation oncologists. And the decision making have two basis points. First, clinical trials, always possible clinical trials. Second, standard treatment. My question is, what is the best standard treatment? This is the standard option for head and neck cancer according to Peerview Press. And uh, all possibility of, uh, are possible with hypopharyn cancer. Surgery plus radiotherapy, chemo radiation, and induction chemotherapy plus radiotherapy. What is the principal problem? The principal problem with head and neck cancer and hypopharyn cancer is the local regional control. Local regional control depends on the stage of the patient, but rarely exceeding 50%. And the majority of the patients have local regional failure. When medical oncology speak about head and neck cancer, we are speaking about not only hypopharyn cancer. We are speaking about oropharyn, oral cavity, larynx, or hypopharyn. In general, all of type of this type, all of tumor primary site are included in different trials. What is the objective with hypopharyn cancer? Uh, in my opinion, the principal objective is the cure. The second objective is the organ preservation and quality of life. And today, with medical treatment, it's possible organ preservation without damage over a survival. But now we have new objective, increase over a survival and organ preservation. The question is how? This is the classical report from EROTC is the learning preservation in hypopharyn cancer for Professor Lefebvre. In this paper, patients with resectable, resectable hypopharyn carcinoma were included in two arms, surgery plus radiotherapy or induction chemotherapy plus radiotherapy. The primary endpoint was overall survival and the second endpoint was learning preservation. It's very important to see here in the majority of the patients were in stage three and piriform sinus. As you can see, the larvae preservation was possible with the damage the overall survivor. This is the, uh, the beta charts, uh, of the beta the information about the classical treatment for pharyngeal carcinoma. As you can see, for stage three and four with radiotherapy, the survival at five years uh, five year is only 20, 25%. And this is the other information from the beta where patients with pharyngeal carcinoma were treated with surgery and radiotherapy. As you can see in stage three and four, only 20 or 25% of the patients are alive at five years. What about the standard treatment? For operable patient, for resectable patient, is possible surgery plus radiation therapy. And for unresectable patient, is possible chemo radiation. Today, the survival for patient with unresectable tumor is around the 20 at 30 percent with chemo radiation or other type of the therapy. What about the medical oncology in the treatment of the patient with head and neck cancer? 25 years ago, cisplatin therapy was a revolution in the treatment of this patient. We had in this time 
a very, sorry, a very high response rate with cisplatin chemotherapy, it, but the problem was the evaluation of the, this type of the response really was a very high response with uh, three cycles of cisplatin 5U. What was the rationale for the use of in induction chemotherapy? Induction chemotherapy and subsequent radiotherapy not compromise the survival of the patient. Respond to induction chemotherapy produce benefit to respond to radiotherapy and is part of the larin preservation. Induction chemotherapy reduces the incidence of distant disease and two individual trials show its benefit in survival with induction PF. This is a classical paper uh, 25 years ago from Professor Al Sarraf, where patients with completely respond to induction chemotherapy really had benefit in overall survival. Only patients with completely respond to induction chemotherapy. This, this paper had 25 years. But in the meta-analysis reported by Pignon, you can, uh, you can see the benefit of concomitant chemo radiation and the induction chemotherapy had benefits only with PF scheme. Only this scheme had benefit in survival, no other scheme with cisplatin and other types of the therapy. Now, how can we improve the result? Probably changing the scheme of induction chemotherapy and probably change the approach of the treatment. This is the report from the OTC and Professor Fermonken with the TPF in front of PF for patients with unresectable head and neck cancer. Patients were randomized between two arms and then were treated with radiotherapy or chemoradiation. Neck dissection or surgery in patients without response was allowed. As you see, TPF arm had benefit in survival with respect to PF arm. This is the other paper from Dr. Marshall Porner report in New England Journal when patients with resectable and unresectable head and neck cancer were randomized between PF or TPF arm arm and then the radical treatment was radiotherapy with weekly carboplatin. Surgery was allowed if necessary. As you can see in this paper, TPS was better than PF in terms of overall survival. Here you can see the both study in New England Journal where TPF was better than PF in terms of overall survival and in terms of induction chemotherapy. This is the Spanish study. The Spanish study have now a short follow-up for survival, but about the response, I give the information. In this study, patients only with unresectable head and neck cancer were included, and patients were randomized between PF plus chemoradiation, TPF plus chemoradiation, or chemoradiation as front line. Now we have only data about the response. As you can see, the R with TPF plus chemoradiation have 70% 70 70 of complete response and CRT as frontline, 50% of complete response, and this difference was statistically significant. <gasps> the question is Does the complete response to induction chemotherapy plus chemoradiation have the same benefit in survival? If you remember the paper from Al Sarraf, only patients with complete response had benefit in survival. The question now is, what is the standard treatment for head and neck cancer and pharyngeal carcinoma? Maybe possible in the majority of the meetings say the standard treatment or all standard treatment is chemoradiation. But the natural evolution is, as, is toward gold standard. In my opinion, the gold standard may be induction chemotherapy plus chemoradiation. In conclusion, hypopharyngeal carcinoma had a bad prognosis with a classical treatment. 
For medical oncology, when speak about the hypopharynx carcinoma is similar with respect to other types of localization. Today, the larin preservation is possible without damage the overall survival. Induction is feasible in a select patient with a very good PS. Now, uh, 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 sorry, it's possible uh, salvage surgery in patients without response to induction chemotherapy, and now we have data about the superiority of TPF and induction chemotherapy. Probably induction TPF plus chemoradiation may be the next standard, in special for patients with unresectable head and neck cancer. Thank you for your attention.